Today for Mousetrap Monday, I have another really old style mousetrap to show you. This is one of the most simple designs, but I was amazed at how effective it is at catching mice. It consists of two common household items that you'd find in a kitchen. Well, at least a kitchen from 427 years ago. You see, this mousetrap is described in a book written by Mascal in 1590. I've been recreating a lot of mousetraps out of that book. I'll put the title there. You notice it's really long and he spells words differently. In that book, he lists 12 traps for catching mice and rats. I've been recreating all of them. This is number nine, so I have a few more to go. This is what he calls a bowl and fill bowl. That's all you need to make a trap. Bowls were commonly used back then. They were made out of different material other than clear glass, wood, or other things. I'm using a clear glass here so you can see how it works. The other item was this. He calls it a fill bowl. It's a curved piece of wood, and it's basically the time period's equivalent of a spatula. It's used to scrape out the bottom of the bowl. Interestingly enough, a fill bowl is a word used to describe a utensil that's not written anywhere else in history other than Mascal's book for traps. So we don't know exactly what it looks like, but we do know it's a curved piece of wood with a long tail. Now I'll show you how to set up this trap. It's pretty simple. The idea is you're going to catch a mouse under a bowl that's turned upside down. To set it, you prop up one end of the bowl. The mouse is going to come under there to get the bait, which is attached to the tail end of our utensil, our fill bowl. And then you prop it up like this and you try to get the balance just right. So the end of the bowl sits on the lower part of the hook of this utensil. It kind of wants to go side to side. I'll show you how I fix that problem. But if you can get the balance just right, this will be a very sensitive trigger. Just like that. The mice will come along, come under there, pull on the end of this to get the bait. It comes down right on them. So I'll show you the improvements I've made and then we'll go test this out with our pet mice. Because the bowl wants to wobble, having something on either side to stabilize it really helps. You could use a book, you could use a brick. Here I'm using a piece of wood with two nails. You push the bowl up against like that, it's really steady. You can lift it up and it's not going to rock back and forth. Then you can put in your trigger and having it more secure really helps for setting it. You just got to get the balance right. Let's test this trap out with our black mouse. His name is Batman. This trap works really well. Batman went in there, put his weight on the trigger, and the bull came down. Let's go set this up in the barn with motion cameras, see if we can get some wild mice. I'm going to use Tootsie Roll candy as bait for them. Four hundred and twenty-seven years ago, Muscal described in his book a very simple mousetrap that could be made from two household items you find in the kitchen, a bowl and their equivalent of a spatula, and clearly it works. It's a live animal trap, so we'll let this guy go. We got a deer mouse here. This is one of the most simple mousetraps described in Muscal's book, but it's also one of the most effective.